With more and more players attempting to acquire adept loot from the Grandmaster Nightfalls, I thought it would be fun to put together a list of the 20 tips and tricks you need to know for completing Grandmaster Nightfalls. But before we get into our list, a huge shout out to today's sponsor of the video, Opera GX. Opera GX is a web browser that is specifically built for gamers with one thing in mind, to enhance your overall web browsing experience without jeopardizing your gaming experience. It has a built-in feature that lets you control how much CPU and RAM you allow it to use, thus allowing you to enhance your gaming experience by reducing any lag that can come from a normal web browser like Google. What I really like about Opera GX is that it comes with a feature that limits the amount of bandwidth used by Opera GX. By limiting your bandwidth, this can lead to a much more smooth gaming experience and streaming experience. Other browsers can eat up way too much bandwidth, causing you to lag in game. Now, one of the best features that comes with Opera GX is integrated social media channels. Let me ask you, how often are you checking your phone for a Bungie tweet? Checking if the servers are down? Or maybe you're opening up Google and looking for one of those spicy Bravex Hero Instagram posts. Rather than having multiple windows open on Google, which can lead to higher RAM usage, Opera GX comes with a built-in sidebar that comes with all your favorite social media services. But not only that, the GX player allows you to use apps such as Spotify or Apple Music, making life much easier since everything is all on one browser. Since this is 2021 and staying connected with friends is done over the internet, Opera GX has your back. You can stay connected with your friends through Discord, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and even Telegram. Now, one of the newest features is GX Mobile, which is similar to Opera GX browser, but for your phone. GX Mobile brings all your favorite features from the desktop version to the palm of your hands. If you're looking for a browser that can make surfing the internet and staying connected with multiple social media platforms, then Opera GX is a great option and it's free. So if you're interested in Opera GX, my link is going to be down below in the description and on the pinned comment. Shout out to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. But with that, let's get into the 20 tips and tricks. Our first tip on the list is going to be stunning properly. A lot of players, and I mean a lot of players, do not understand how to stun enemies properly. When it comes to stunning unstoppable and overload champions, a lot of players are under the assumption that you simply have to just fire your weapon and it'll stun them. This is ineffective and will simply just cause you to waste time and ammunition. To stun properly, you need to first aim down sights for a few seconds. This will then activate the perk and you can see that perk on the left hand corner. While this perk is active, it should only take one shot from said weapon to stun the enemy. Our next tip involves freezing champions. Guys, stasis is a great option for grandmasters, but if you plan on using a stasis grenade or stasis ability on a champion, you need to keep one thing in mind. Freezing a champion will reset their stun state. If you use a stasis ability, you need to either kill your enemy immediately or continue to stun them by freezing them. If you fail to do either of the two, their stun state will be negated and they'll get their damage resistance back. It's easy to tell which champion mods are needed for the current Grandmaster. But one thing you can prepare for is having good champion mod balance. Take this scenario for instance. If the Grandmaster calls for anti-barrier and unstoppable, and the player with anti-barrier is dead, then there's no way to defeat that anti-barrier without that fallen teammate. This can be easily avoided by being ready to defeat every champion by yourself even if your teammates die. This is why having a good balance of champion mods can go a long way when completing Grandmaster Nightfalls. Unlike in PvP where you can get away with low resilience, Grandmasters are completely different. Having low resilience in Grandmasters can lead to unnecessary deaths since your total HP is much less. Now there isn't a specific level of resilience you need to have before entering a Grandmaster, but I would suggest you get at 5 or around 5. On that note, for my Warlocks out there utilizing Wall of Radiance, when you activate your super, keep in mind that the enemies in the Grandmaster will not only be shooting you and your allies, but they'll also be shooting your sword, which keeps the Well of Radiance active. With the most recent changes by Bungie, Well of Radiance now scales to the resilience of the player who activates it. The lower your resilience is, the more damage your sword will take. 
All right, completing Grand Masters is about surviving and finishing as quickly as possible. Why? Because we want to farm the Grand Master, am I right? A lot of players are scared to utilize their heavy ammo because they think they'll need it for the boss fight. But you need to see it in this perspective. You need to get to the boss fight first. And the best way of doing so is utilizing your heavy ammo. If your armor is optimized for your heavy weapon, such as ammo finders, then you'll find plenty of ammo on the ground throughout the Grand Master. So feel free to utilize your heavy ammo whenever necessary, especially when it comes to defeating champions. The same goes for your supers. A lot of players don't utilize their super because they either forget or they think they should wait for a better opportunity. By using your super, not only will you be generating orbs for your teammates, but in areas with a lot of enemies, it can be a surefire way of avoiding unnecessary deaths. Alright guys, have you ever run into one of these during a Grandmaster? Sure, you might avoid these during normal patrol, but at any time during a Grandmaster you see a public event rally flag, you should attempt to rally the flag. This is a great way to replenish all your ammunition, including your heavy ammo, and fully charge your super bar. Also don't worry, you're not obligated to participate in the public event. Since each Grandmaster is a strike, but on steroids, it has a few randomized enemies, those of which can spawn with a random shield type. Well, you need to be prepared to deal with all sorts of shields. One of the best ways that my fire team and myself do this is by either having an ability, heavy weapon, or special weapon with a different elemental type. For example, if I'm using my threaded needle and a solar subclass, and I know there are a few arc shields, one of my teammates will utilize an arc elemental weapon thus allowing us to break that shield much faster, saving us time and ammunition. In competitive PvP or trials, simultaneously activating a super ability alongside a teammate, it's taboo, it's frowned upon. But in Grand Masters, this can be a great way to clear hordes of enemies extremely quickly. Earlier we mentioned not to be afraid to utilize your super, but let's add to that. Knowing when to use multiple supers can be the difference of surviving a chaotic engagement. By utilizing multiple supers, it can take a very congested enemy room down to just a few enemies remaining. Remember guys, don't be afraid to use your super, you're gonna get it back regardless over time. Alright, how many times have you asked a teammate to use a specific exotic and you're met with the phrase, Oh, I, I got it, but it doesn't have the catalyst unlocked. Some exotics perform better with the Catalyst. For example, Ariana's Vow is a great gun all on its own, but with the Catalyst, this now adds two more rounds and it gives the gun auto-loading holster. The same goes for the exotic grenade launcher, the Wither Horde. The Wither Horde is a great gun for clearing out large groups of enemies, but rather than having to reload it over and over like a normal grenade launcher, the Catalyst allows the Wither Horde to be reloaded when it's stowed away. So if you're still missing a few catalysts, I say unlock them and complete them. Now after unlocking the best exotics for Grandmasters, there are 5 that come with intrinsic champion mods already built into it. So consider the following before jumping into a Grandmaster. Number 1 we have the exotic hand cannon, the Ariana's Vow, and this has built in anti-barrier. Next we have the exotic energy sidearm, Devil's Ruin. This exotic has built in unstoppable champion mods. We also have the exotic trace rifle, the Divinity, which comes with the built-in Overload Champion mods. There's also the Bastion, which is an exotic kinetic fusion rifle, which comes with Unstoppable Champion mod. And lastly, we have the Leviathan's Breath, which is an exotic heavy combat bow, which comes with Unstoppable Champion mods built into the bow. These exotics are great options if you're looking to save room on your gauntlets and you want to have a mod for every encounter. Moving into number 11, guys, if you're anything like me, then you already got the idea that you're going to try to put an overload mod on your hand cannon and stack that with Ariana's Val. Or put an overload sidearm mod and stack that with the Devil's Ruin. It doesn't work, Bungie's already two steps ahead of you. Guys, intrinsic champion mods do not stack with other mods. I hate to break it to you. When it comes to Grandmasters, everything hits harder. This is why you should consider utilizing damage resistant mods. There are so many mods to choose from. You have choices that range from elemental damage like solar arc or void. They even be more specific to the damage type 
You can use mods such as sniper damage resistance or melee damage resistance. The mod you decide to go with will all depend on the Grandmaster of the week. If you have a Grandmaster that has a lot of void damage, you might want to consider running void resistance. And yes guys, they do stack. You will have diminishing returns, but they will still stack on top of each other. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm going to slap these mods on and I won't die. Yes, these mods are extremely helpful, but they're not going to make you immune to damage. One thing to keep in mind is that all of these mods are specific to the elemental type on your armor. This is why you should have different elemental type armor readily available. Now, I'm sure it's common sense that standing out in the open in a Grandmaster is probably one of the biggest mistakes any player can do. But in Grandmasters, it might take you a few runs to find out which is the best cover in a certain area. These strikes are designed to have random objects such as boxes and walls set up in certain locations that provide sufficient cover that can stop enemy damage and splash damage. Keep in mind that in some Grandmasters, you might want to avoid standing directly behind cover since you can die from splash damage. After running Grandmaster and Grandmaster and Grandmaster over and over and over, something that has stuck with me is long range is good. Sometimes being in front of your enemy isn't the best spot, especially in Grandmasters. This is why dealing damage from a distance is a great tactic for taking out large hordes of enemies or spongy champions. During Grandmasters, you're bound to die. This is why you have revives and you start off with a good amount of them. But regardless of the number of revives you have, if you start a Grandmaster off and you lose a couple of lives early on, it's okay to say, oh wells, and start over. But why is that? Well, why would you attempt to go through an entire Grandmaster running low on lives and you're having to be more passive and playing much slower than intended? Just restart the strike and start with a fresh set of lives. On the topic of revives and starting over, a few things to keep in mind. For starters, each champion defeated in a Grandmaster awards you with one additional revive. But with that in mind, keep a count of how many champions you have left to defeat in that Grandmaster. This can give you a general idea of how many lives you'll have left by the time you reach the boss fight. But not only that, it gives you a general idea of how passive or aggressive you might want to play the entire Grandmaster. Look, enemies in Grandmasters, they can be jerks, they can be extremely aggressive, and sometimes they'll hyper-focus one of your teammates. One of the best things you can do is be a good distraction. If you have a teammate that's pinned down behind cover and they're unable to escape, you can always peek out and draw the enemy's attention by firing your gun at them. But not only that, how often have you seen special ammo or heavy ammo on the ground? And you want to pick it up, but you're unable to because there's a lot of enemies. This is the time that one of your teammates can be a good distraction. They can draw the attention of the enemies, thus allowing you to pick up that ammo. Just be really careful if you try to do this. You don't want to die in a process, which puts your team in a bigger pickle. But on the topic of a fallen teammate, you should always try your best not to revive them when enemies are actively shooting them. This can easily get them farmed. And not only that, it'll chip away at the number of revives you have left for the Grandmaster. This is why we revert back to tip number 17, be a good distraction. If you and another ally are still alive, have one of you move around the map to draw the attention of the enemies while the other teammate revives the fallen teammate. Okay, okay, this one seems pretty basic, but it can be really tilting when it happens. If you are tasked with breaking the shield of an anti-barrier, please be ready to break it as soon as possible. Anti-barrier champions can regenerate their health extremely quickly just by activating their shields. This is why you need to be ready to break their shield as soon as possible. If you're unsure of when an anti-barrier is going to activate their shield, you can tell right before they activate it. They stand still for a bit after receiving a good amount of damage. Then they activate their shield. This is something that can be easily read and be a good indicator that it's time to swap to your anti-barrier weapon. All right, we made it to the final tip in the video, and I saved the best for last. When doing Grandmasters, you shouldn't treat it like a strike. Every player, and I mean every player, messes around during a strike. They got fun weapons on, they're doing things they wouldn't normally do in a Grandmaster. Do not treat a Grandmaster like it's a strike. And lastly, expect dumb stuff to happen. This is destiny and random things happen in game 
all the time. Don't be mad if something out of the ordinary happens to you and causes you to die. Dumb stuff happens. Overall, these are just a few tips that should help any player looking to jump into a Grandmaster. Even if you knew majority of these tips and tricks, hopefully they acted as a refresher. I feel like a lot of players are missing out on Grandmasters. They feel like you need to be a PvE sweat lord to attempt these. If you just keep these tips in mind, you'll be fine. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to leave a like on the video, which lets me know to make more content like this. Also, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more Destiny 2 videos. And don't forget to turn on all notifications. I really do appreciate you stopping by and hanging out. I hope you all have a good day and I will see you in the next video.